Hey there, it's your host Brian Weedai, Pasta Padre, and welcome to a special episode of the Press Row Podcast. Commentary is a sticking point for most sports video game franchises, considering how difficult and timely it is to overhaul when years worth of an audio library has been built, and how fans place wildly different levels of importance on it. However, it's one of the best ways to define and remember certain additions in a series. Since the transition to the Xbox 360 and PS3 now over a decade ago, Madden has gone through a number of commentary changes. It began with a much maligned radio broadcaster from Madden 06 to 08, before being replaced with Tom Hammond and Chris Collinsworth in Madden 09. Hammond would last only a year, ceding way to Gus Johnson in Madden 10. Johnson and Collinsworth remained until Madden 13 when the CBS team of Jim Nance and Phil Simms took over. And now, the next major change is about to take place with Madden NFL 17. In this episode, our Rich Grisham interviews the new commentary team, Fox Sports and NFL Network analyst Charles Davis, and familiar play-by-play -play voice from college basketball Brandon Godden, along with EA Sports producer Christian McLeod. We'll have another podcast on Sunday, June 12th, featuring interviews with Madden NFL 17 and FIFA 17 developers. That coincides with the EA Press Briefing, where announcements will be made and trailers will debut for the upcoming sports games. And now, on to Rich and special guests Davis, Gowden, and McLeod. All right, well, we are back, and this is big-time news today, folks. We are, we are here today with several of the members of the Madden team, a couple of new folks, um, and we're here to talk about the new commentary uh, system for Madden NFL 17. You know, there, there are a few things, with, with the size and scope of big-time sports video games these days, especially a game like Madden, where you have so many different ways that people experience the game. Some people are ultimate team players only. Some people are just offline franchise guys. Some people just create their own player and take him as a sort of a single player through a career. Uh, some people just play their buddies online. You know, there's so many different experiences that you can have when you play a game like Madden. Yet they're, the universal experience that everybody gets is the commentary. And for the first time in several years, uh, the Madden NFL team has rebuilt the entire commentary. There's a brand new commentary team. It's very exciting. It's something I know the community has been uh, talking about for years. Commentary is always one of those things. So we're here to talk all about that today with three folks from the Madden team. Up first, we have the producer of Madden NFL 17, Christian McLeod. Christian, welcome back to the show. Great to be here, Rich. Thanks for having us on. Uh, we also have the two new commentary uh, guys joining us. Uh, if you are a sports fan, there's a chance that you have heard both of them uh, apply their trade in the real world. Up first, we have uh, Mr. Charles Davis. Charles, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Rich. Appreciate it. And we also have Brandon Godden, uh, from, uh, uh, also from uh, the Madden team, and you probably have heard him uh, doing work as well in uh, college football and, and other NCAA uh, sports. So, uh, Mr. Godden, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate it. So this is, this is a big deal. Um, so we'll start with you, Christian. You know, commentary, I mentioned, it's a universal thing. Like Everybody hears the commentary. Uh, for years, uh, you have gone after what I feel is, is like sort of trying to represent a, an NFL network um, you know, game day experience with having uh, you know, people who, who work the NFL games uh, regularly um, representing a network. This year, you, you, you made a change, and, and it, you, you know, obviously, you know, both Mr. Davis and Mr. Gowden are experienced, um, you know, uh, broadcasters, but aren't a, you know, NFL game day team working on a network like, uh, you know, CBS or Fox together. So maybe you can just explain a little bit about sort of the thought, press, thought process as to what, what went into making the change, how long this has been in the works, and some of the key things that you're uh, reasons that you're excited for this you know, pretty uh, you know significant uh, uh, you know feature modification this year. Oh yeah, so starting about midway through the Madden 16 cycle, the the team got together and we really realized it was time to go big on commentary. Uh, as you know, a lot of our systems have seen pretty large upgrades as we got into this current generation of of consoles. You've seen gameplay make big strides. You've seen presentation or franchise mode, ultimate team, the, the advent of draft champions. And commentary was always one of those systems that 
was a little bit stuck in the past. It was built for the previous generations of consoles, and as we made it to the current generation, we began adding pieces to it, but the core framework was still that uh, previous generation. So we knew that now that our other systems were up to speed, it was time to really blow commentary up. And uh, you know, for lack of a better term, again, we just we blew up the old system. We we took the old house, we took a bulldozer, we bulldozed it down, we got some jackhammers, we took out the old concrete foundation, we bought some new land, and uh, we started building a new house from scratch. Poured the new foundation, and and they're building it. And uh, really, our our core message there was we wanted to create the most authentic NFL broadcast commentary in a video game. And knowing the power that the current generation of consoles have to offer us, we knew that a new framework was the, the number one starting block for that. Uh, once we had done that, tremendous team of rock star engineers, designers, uh, you know, speech artists here that started laying that foundation, we knew that we really wanted to also make a splash with our, our team that could really support this framework that we had put into place. And we've been so lucky in the past to have authentic NFL commentators that have called games together with John Madden, Pat Summerall starting there, and uh, Chris Collinsworth, Al Michaels, Jim Nance, Phil Simms. So tremendously lucky to have them. And uh, as we started looking at what we wanted to do, it was a, a radical thought process at the time, but we, we wanted to, instead of take established talent that was at a network and bring them into the Madden realm, we wanted to use Madden as a place to establish our own broadcast commentary team that we could then unleash upon the real world, knowing that we want Brandon and Charles to be, to be a part of you know, a Fox broadcast or CBS broadcast in the future at some point. So that was kind of the genesis of everything. So you know, before we had Brandon and, and Charles locked in, we established four core pillars as we began this search for a commentary team. And those four core pillars were around team accessibility, being able to, to have the team here recording in Orlando uh, multiple days per week because we knew we had such a large framework now that we're on this current console generation, so many cool things that we can talk about, so much depth, so much breadth. We needed the accessibility with our talent to be able to go in and really uh, just fill these, these buckets full of content. Uh, the next piece was really team chemistry. Uh, in the past, to no fault of the talent, but in the past, we've recorded all, all over the country. You know, we've recorded one person on one coast, one person on the other coast, and we're trying to create this authentic realism in the booth that these two people are talking to each other, and they have the chemistry, and they're bouncing back and forth. And even if we've got them doing uh, via ISDN lines or, or over the phone and whatnot, recording together, they're not really together. And I think you miss out on a lot of those nuances that – uh, players come to expect when they watch a real NFL broadcast. They want to hear that in Madden. So that team chemistry was something extremely important for us to find in our new team. Uh, the third pillar was around the uh, teaching of football. Uh, I think something our, our gameplay team does so well and, and our, our franchise team, it's uh, bringing users in and, and teaching them fundamentals of football, teaching them uh, you know, zone concepts, reads, uh, just how to play the game of football. And we feel that commentary is such an important aspect of that teaching aspect as well. Not just a football 101, but football 201, football 301, football 401, teaching people about teams and team history, teaching them about players and player history. You may know that Odell Beckham Jr. is the, is the type of player that is able to go deep, right? Or uh, a guy like... Uh, you know, Golden Tate may be a, a nice little slot receiver, but you also know that OBJ is also extremely devastating on, on short routes. You know that Golden Tate's a great deep ball receiver, and we want to be able to teach those uh, mechanics to users as they play the game, to educate them on their players, on their teams, and also on the concepts. And then the fourth one was really around, uh, with the, the technology that we have now, we have the ability to live update our commentary throughout the NFL season. And we really wanted to find a team that would be really interested in, in the science of how video games talk and, and how we can make commentary from that aspect. So we started a, a audition process that went for nearly a year. And we were extremely lucky to find Brandon and Charles, who I think hit on every single aspect of what we were looking for. And I'm going to hand it over to those guys and maybe take you through a little bit on those pillars and, and their feelings on the audition process. But Again, we could not be more excited to, to land both Brandon and Charles and 
uh, you know, great chemistry. They've got great uh, accessibility. They've got great knowledge of the game. And I'll, I'll just hand it over to those guys to kind of talk a little deeper there. Well, let's let's start with you, uh, Charles. So um, you've had a you know very successful uh, career in in football from you know playing the game at an extremely high level in the SEC, and then you know a a, a long career in sports casting as well. What did you think when you were first either approached or you know heard about this opportunity? Um, you know, what did you think about it? And then over the course of time, you know, maybe you can talk a little bit about what what you what you were able to bring based upon your background, but also sort of what was new and different, you know, because video games, you know, <laughs> announcing for a video game <laughs> is quite different than announcing for a game unfolding right in front of you in real time. Yeah, yeah, so true. Well, first and foremost, I'm absolutely shocked to hear that it was a year-long audition process. I'd been told I was the first and only choice, so <laughs> I'm not really devastated <laughs> right now. So just... To find out, find out the other information, but you're so right about it. I'll start with the last part, Rich. You know, video games versus versus the real. And in a video game, as Brandon talked about a little bit before, we're trying to make it sound like it's a real game. That's our goal. We want people to watch it, I mean, to, to play it and feel like they're getting it in real time like we would do. But we know that there are constraints and it just can't be done quite the same way because – you have to prepare for every eventuality in a video game. You have to prepare for all the third and ones from the right hash at the 32-yard line, what types of plays they can run, and right on down the line. So you have to do it that way, but the goal is to try and, and, and make it sound like, wow, they just watched that happen and they just called it. What I think, that, that, that what I think works for me is my background in both college and pro and how it's morphed into my current jobs, which is I now call NFL games again for the second second go-round on a Sunday. But throughout the year, and then once the season's over, I start preparing for the NFL draft for NFL Network. So all these rookies coming in, I've done an evaluation on them coming out of college about what type of player I thought they were, and before I was talking about what round I thought they might go in and what team would fit them. Well, now for this game, it's what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Are they fast? Are they slow? You know, are they physical? Are they not? Those types of things. So when we start talking about individual players, now I think I can bring a little bit of that to it as well because I know both of both worlds pretty well. I've been working college and pro for a number of years now. I've had a foot and firmly planted in each game. And so now I know what it takes to, to kind of morph from one to the other and we'll never fully solve the mystery, Rich, of why a kid can be an All-American in college and not make it in the pros, and why a kid from you know West Alabama who didn't get drafted at all can make one of the bigger plays in Super Bowl history and clinch a, a, a Super Bowl championship, mm. and no one had heard of him before. We'll never solve all of that. But is it? But for this game, I think that I can help, you know, illuminate a good number of those guys that maybe we didn't know about before or just even the ones who were the high-profile guys. This is what I thought of them coming in, and this is how I think they'll play. And a lot of times they'll play above that, which is really cool for them, and and obviously for us. So, Brandon, uh, similar question to you. With, you know, based on your background and what you've known and, and, and how you sort of come up through the ranks, you know, what, what, you know, when you first had the opportunity to do this and explore it and then actually sat down and started you know, actually doing, doing the work, what was – what was maybe the most you know surprising thing to you? What 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 did you experience that you're like, okay, yeah, no, I got this. This is like what I do, and this happens with this happens. Versus, oh man, okay, I gotta. This is something completely new. And and how did you sort of prepare for that new challenge? Sure. Well, first, Rich, I'll I'll kind of tell you the story that I've shared with those guys of last January, I guess it was, I get a LinkedIn message from somebody at EA Sports out in California, and it just simply says, would you be interested in discussing a possible opportunity at EA Sports? And I thought it was a, a spam message for mm. many reasons. So I, you know, first and foremost, I knew that Nance and Sims were calling the game, and I, I thought, well, what could this opportunity be about? And I, I've never been connected with EA Sports, so why is this coming in? And then got on the phone with them. They explained what they wanted to do, that they wanted to go in more in depth, that they wanted to bring in a new commentary team. And somehow I was lucky enough to have Christian who's on the phone stumble upon my work at some point in time and remember me. 
And they said, would you want to come down here and audition? And that, was that even a question? I mean, yeah, of course I want to come down there and audition. How fast can I get down there? And then going through that process and, and finally getting through it and then receiving the call. I'll never forget where I was. I was getting ready to play pickup basketball with some of my friends in Atlanta. And I saw the call come in and it was a 407 Orlando number. And I ran outside to take it, and they had informed me that they had selected me to be the one. And that's that's just one of those moments in life. You get very few of them, but that's one of those moments in life that you never forget, ever, ever, ever. And uh, extremely grateful for someone who really grew up with this game, saw the impact of it as a kid in the 90s, rushed home with my friends from school to play it. Uh, you know, it's staggering. And, and the guys that you know and that Charles mentioned and that Christian mentioned that have been there before, Nathan Sims, Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Pat Summerall, uh, John Madden. I mean, <laughs> to have the opportunity to kind of sit where those guys have sat, if you will, and to be a small part of this legacy, I'm just extremely grateful and honored. Uh, and, and then more to your question of what's this like? You know, it's kind of a mesh of play-by-play -play for me and for Charles, the analyst role, but it's kind of a mesh of taking what you have learned from calling live games and also then incorporating voiceover acting into one unique world. And I view that as a great challenge and opportunity. And I think Charles and I both have found it extremely rewarding and a lot of fun. You know, what, I, what I've quickly found is that you're always learning in this business. And Charles and I, we still get to call real games every week in this fall. And we hope that the continual lessons there, you know, a great combination of sports broadcasters and now voiceover actors, lessons in both sides can blend and become better and better over time for us. Um, and so to give you an idea of what, from a play-by-play -play standpoint, and I used this example yesterday, but when, when I'm in that booth, what I learned quickly is just how smart these people are that are designing this game, Rich, because I will record things from seven different weeks that will come together to be a single 10 to 12 second line. And those guys have to make sure that my tone is correct, that my excitement level is correct, and that it all makes sense. And it all sounds like I was recording them in the same day. So if I say it's fourth and goal, Brady drops to pass, looks right side, and it's caught by Gronkowski. Gronkowski with a late touchdown grab, and the Patriots take the lead. Those seven lines, everywhere I took a pause, those are seven different lines that are recorded in seven different weeks possibly, most likely recorded in seven different weeks. So the fact that these guys, these 250-some-odd people that put this game together, have the know-how to design that and then implement it and put it in a game has really been staggering, I think, for Charles and I to look at and, and then to try to implement. But it's also, like I said, it's a great challenge, and it's a lot of fun, and it's just a very exciting process that we've been able to learn and watch unfold. You know, it's fascinating to me, Christian, that you – and the Madden team have gone in this direction, which is you're really rebranding Madden as its own platform. Um, and what I'm saying is that for years it, it felt like, and I, I mean it felt like it because it's what we saw and what we heard, it felt like you were replicating a uh, game day experience uh, when I'm sitting at home watching a game on CBS or on Fox or on NBC or on ESPN, depending upon whether it's Monday Night Football or Sunday at 1 or, or a primetime Sunday night game, right? So it was, in fact, you know, years ago you'd even see like the, the network uh, logo, you know, or you would have the, you know, the commentators and, and it would be almost like replicating. But now you're going in what I think, frankly, is a, is a, is a smarter direction, which is sort of Madden is its own brand and this is the madden experience obviously there's a lot of that you know okay it's a television kind of a presentation um but really with madden being the brand uh or madden being the prat platform for the nfl brand and having your own team this really kind of changes things from the perspective of how you present your game right now you've got brandon and charles as a commentary team which gives it its own unique flavor so was you know, I, I'm, I want to sort of revisit what you said earlier. By making this choice, it's a definite direction that you're going in to, to further differentiate when you're playing Madden from, you know, what you might watch on TV. So talk a little bit more about the decision process to make that happen and, and what, what opportunities that gives you that you might not have had otherwise. Sure. I think the, the main one, right, is the accessibility piece. 
And again, when we knocked this house down and we rebuilt from scratch, we wanted to make sure that we were covering the, the appropriate breadth across a football video game. I mean, football is a very unique sport. It's not like basketball. It's not like hockey. It's not like soccer. And it creates some unique challenges in the commentary realm. And, and really, there's no other sport that you expect analysis after every single play. I mean, you look at hockey, you look at soccer, you look at basketball, and there are pinch points. There are moments where you're going to analyze what happened. But there are much longer stretches where you're able to banter back and forth. There's much longer stretches where you can be telling stories and maybe not focused on specific action. Whereas football, we expect a concise play-by-play followed by analysis of each and every play in a game. And just think about all the different things that can happen in real life football. Now think about all the different things that can happen (laughs) in a football video game. You've got a user behind the sticks who's experienced or maybe a non-experienced user behind the sticks. So we really wanted to make sure that we were able to cast that net and cover all of these different possibilities, a lot like what Charles was alluding to. So, When we brought Brandon and and Charles in, the thing that blew us away by both of them right off the bat was their just excitement to understand how video game commentary worked. And, And where that translates to is that these are guys that they're excited about this process. They're excited about how this works. So they're sitting with our development team. They're sitting with our engineers. They're sitting with our designers, our producers, our writers, and they're workshopping with them in the studio, you know, sometimes creatively brainstorming, being a part of build reviews, being a part of listening sessions. They're ingrained as part of this team. And I think, Rich, to kind of circle back to the question, this is the, the thing that we were looking for. You know, when you have hundreds of millions of games of Madden played per year, uh, it's something that we want to create an authentic Madden branded commentary that, again, that we can unleash upon the world. and and out there. And again, we've been so fortunate to have the the broadcast duos in the past, but to your point, it's always, you know, made us struggle with that identity factor a little bit. Are we CBS? Are we NFL Network? Are we Fox? You know, in the early 90s when the the summer all Madden days. So were we NBC when we had Michaels or even Tom Hammond? So now it's, it's Madden. These are the voices of Madden. And that was what was so exciting going into this was Really, for the first time, the team felt like we were going to go get the voices of Madden for a new generation. And when Brandon and Charles came in, we had that accessibility piece, you know, hitting on the chemistry piece as well, sitting those guys down together. It was love at first sight for us from a development team. It was a situation where they sat down and immediately everyone looked at each other in a room within two seconds of them being able to go back and forth in their audition process we knew that these were the guys and the teaching portion, both of these guys, I know they dabbled in college, but both are such uh, just knowledgeable NFL people. And Charles, we we joke with him all the time down in the studio, we call him Professor Charles because he just comes with just this knowledge and this, this storylines and the players and teams and former Super Bowls and stories from the seventies. And it's just, it's so rich, the content that they're able to go back and forth on that. We're just so excited for you to be able to hear it. So uh, again, it's something where it's not necessarily an identity struggle, but it's, we now feel like we have the voice of Madden. And again, we want to unleash that upon the world. So Charles, you've been obviously in doing this for a long time, uh, but the Madden is a new world for you, are you prepared for the new audience that uh, that this is going to uh, you know, present to you? Because obviously, you know, obviously there's a lot of crossover. Obviously, the people who play the game versus yeah. people who, you know, listen to you um, in the different uh, broadcasts that you're on. But it's also there's a lot of folks who are going to get a, you know, who are, who are going to hear about you and listen listen to you for the first time. So, you know. It, are yeah. you prepared for that sort of a, a potential shift in audience and uh, an expansion of, uh, of, of uh, you know, of, of your people who know about you and what you do? You know, I think I'm, I think, Rich, I'm prepared to the extent that you can be prepared. And what I mean by that is until you go through the wave of it, you know, you're, you're hopeful for certain reactions. You're hopeful that what you're doing will be received well by the people who play the game because the respect factor I have for them is exceedingly high. 
And I want to make sure that when they play the game, they're not walking away from the game saying, I can't have any fun because I, because of that guy. You know, and I, this isn't fun for me because I don't want to hear him. You know, I want it to be much more where I'm receding into the background in a lot of ways that they're playing the game and the game carries it. And Brandon will be there to, to, to guide me along the way as well. But the other part of it too is I'm, you know, I, I'm pretty used to being the guy that people go, who, who is that and why, was, why is he here? You know, when Fox took over the BCS game, remember the old BCS? It seems like it's ancient now with the college football playoff. But when Fox took that over, remember, we didn't have a national package. So we kind of orbited in out of, out, of, out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden the biggest game to the year, here comes this new broadcast crew. Like, whoa, where does where these guys come from? And it's jarring for fans. Because whether they absolutely love the other broadcast team or not, they're used to them. And then you get something you're not used to. And let's face it, our audience is used to the names that we've talked about so, so much. And we all have great respect for those guys. You just want to make sure that you have some authenticity with them and with what you're doing. So, you're, you know, I think your question is well posed. and I certainly hope that I'm ready for it. I hope that Brandon and I are both are ready for it because it's going to be new for everyone. But what we really hope is that everyone gets into the game, that we show the respect that we have for the game, which is tremendous and enormous, and that people are okay with that. So, Brandon, when you're preparing to broadcast a game, right, you research the players, you research the history, you research the rivalries, you know, when you're preparing to record your lines for Madden, how do you prepare? Prepare for that. What kind of mindset do you get in, and, and and what's that process? How how is it similar, and how is it different from what you do for your uh, regular broadcasting duties? Well, it's something that we kind of use the phrase "theater of the mind" for. You really have to because you're in a booth and you're not looking at anything down on the field or anything really on a screen at all. You're looking at a script. And sometimes you're ad-libbing and sometimes you're going off of bullet points that they have given you. But whatever the case may be, you have to put yourself in the shoes of what you do on Saturdays and Sundays in the fall. And, and it's, like I was saying earlier, I find that I love voiceover acting and I love play-by-play. So for me, this was the blend of utopia. I mean, this was, this was a mecca for me to be able to blend both of these and be able to act, but also do play-by-play at the same time, and oh yeah, do it for the gold standard of sports video games. Um, And so it's a unique mindset when you go in there, you know, you, I come down from Atlanta every week, go in for at least a day or two a week, sometimes more. We've been doing more here lately with a bigger push as we get toward the end of the, of the gaming process closing out. But it's, it's, it's neat to go in every morning and sit with Christian and engineer and Charles in the booth and get these scripts and not only talk about what's going on, but they've given Charles and I the ability to give suggestions on, no, we wouldn't do it that way, or, hey, this says fourth and one late game situation with two minutes left, but let's also do a situation for if it's inside of 30 seconds, because Charles and I would talk about that differently than if there was a minute and 30 seconds left on the clock, fourth down late in the game. And so the brainstorming aspect of it, too, has been a lot of fun and very challenging. And so, look, is the mindset different? Yes. I mean, when Charles and I are preparing for a game on the weekend, you go all week collecting nuggets, talking to coaches, getting your what we call spotting boards ready and laying them all out, knowing who's on the two deep. And is the quarterback healthy? And is the running back coming off a good or bad game? And And you weave in all these nuggets and storylines throughout the game. And we're trying to do that over the span of six months or so in little bits and pieces and make it all come together and be as real life as humanly possible. So, again, the word I just come back to is challenging and also fun. I think that that's that's a great problem to have of trying to piece all that together because it's been such a a neat puzzle to sort of weave, if you will. And, and, you know, you asked Charles about what's it going to be like when the announcement is made and how do you, how do you know how it's going to be received? And I, and I would say that, that we really don't, um, but we hope that over time we earn the respect of those that play this game. And, you know, Charles and I, like Christian was saying, we want to be a part of this on the ground floor. We, we don't just want to show up and we haven't just been showing up in a booth, recording a few lines, shaking a couple hands and walking back out the door. We want to be invested in the process, do our best to bring the game to life, making it, as close to a real live telecast as humanly possible so that the individuals on the controllers can feel as connected 
and enthralled as ever before and, and through that just want to earn their respect. And, and that's, that's all right and good. I don't expect for people to read the press release and go yell and run to their mom, hey, guess what, Brandon and Charles are doing the commentary. No, I mean, I understand that, that we don't have the name. or certain, And, I, again, I don't want to denigrate Charles at all because he's doing it right now at Fox. But I understand that I don't have the name that Jim Nance has. But want to do this game as much justice with the increased time that we've got to spend on it and over the course of the coming years really earn the respect of those that play the game. Christian, you know, you touched on, on this, or actually I'm not sure if you did, but I, I know Brandon did, and touched on this earlier about the engineering. It takes an incredible amount of, of engineering prowess to string together commentary. So then you've got that. That just in and of itself is a challenge. But then you guys have, I think, at least tripled that challenge, if not more, by the fact that you've got at least three significantly different ways to play the game. You've got Ultimate Team, right, which aren't even real NFL teams that have completely different rosters of players. You know, you might have, you know, the, you know, Tom Brady, but, you you know, you've got, uh, you know, Vernon Davis, and then you've got, uh, you know, DeMarco Murray. Like, I mean, you just have completely different groups of people on that team, right? Then, You've got, you know, just people who download the latest live rosters with the latest live updates and head off to play online. So you've got literally up to the second real teams and players with, with injuries that may have just happened. Um, and, you know, they certain team may be experiencing, um, you know, a, a good season versus a bad season. And then you've got the franchise mode, which can go on for three or four years and take on completely its own unique flavor with teams that may move and franchises that you know the browns may wind up winning three super bowls but you know in reality that hasn't happened like you've got all of those things to cover with the commentary in it you know like how do you make all of this come together you know in the in the world of commentary with these wildly different variations that can happen well, first off, Rich, as a Lions fan, I can empathize with those Browns fans <laughs> and uh, you know, the shot you just took at them, but no, I'm, I'm kidding. Hey, that was no uh, shot. Yeah, I'm an Eagles fan, fan, by the way. Show. I'm an Eagles fan. We haven't yeah. won one of them either, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it, it's a tremendous challenge, especially in a year one where we are, again, we poured that framework, we built that, that house, we put that first coat of paint on, and, and we're still – uh, you know, building as we speak. So it, it's tremendously difficult. And we've done our best this year, especially in this year one, to really, again, our engineers are amazing. Our designers are amazing. Our script writers are amazing. And everyone has taken those modes into account. You know, one of the, the key factors that you just hit on, Rich, was uh, – ultimate team. So just outside of the the fantasy aspect of the players, right? Ultimate team games are inherently shorter. It's not the five minute or the eight minute experience that you may experience in play now or your franchise mode. It's a a short three minute experience in draft champions and in ultimate team two to three minutes and making those sound as contextually correct as possible, right? Sometimes a, a team is not going to get a possession in the first quarter, right? So in a two to three minute game. So we wanted to make sure we had little safeguards in place there that we can make each of those modes feel unique. You know, we're continuously working to expand upon that and, and to, to get additional depth in all of our modes. But for year one, we're very proud of having established a real different feel for each of the modes. You're going to go into your franchise mode. You're going to hear some storylines that are uh, woven that weave into the, the big decision pieces and, and the, the moments that, uh, John White and his team have worked so hard on. You're going to be hearing uh, in Ultimate Team maybe some different introductions that are a little more, I don't want to say breaking the fourth wall, but a little more fun, right? You're, you're coming into a, a little bit different of a scenario than you are in your traditional game modes. And then, of course, really just focusing on that core play-by-play between the, the whistles, making sure that's just as tight, as accurate, and as contextually uh, sound as possible. So it, it's a tremendous challenge. It's something that we always want to improve upon. I, I don't want to sit here and say we're, we're, we're done and, you know, the final coat of paint is there. We're just committed to continuously improving in each of those modes and, and adding depth and logic to make all those modes feel special as we move forward. Charles, what is the most 
come on, man, are you kidding me? Kind of line that you have had to say, right? Because again, this is a video game, right? So <laughs> it is certainly possible for you know people to run up the score to re- ridiculous amounts, or for teams to go sixteen and zero five years in a row. Like, you know, yeah. w- what's a line that you just been like, come on, man, really, seriously? That is so funny because it just happened recently. And I don't know if it's – look, we've got – you're exactly right, Rich. You know the game very well. We're going to have a ton of outrageous lines in there because we know the gamers are, you know, it's it's fourth and, 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 and 99 yards for you to get anything done, and they're going to go for it. So we're going to have to call those. But just the other day, um, I described a terrific run, a 20-plus yard run by the tight end on a running play. <laughs> and I was trying to remember the last time – <laughs> I saw a tight end carry the ball in a game, and the only thing that flashes in my head was Keith Jackson, not the announcer, obviously, but yeah, Keith the, Jackson, who Oklahoma. ended up being an all-pro tight end. Was, exactly. And that was, a bit, that was a play that they used at Oklahoma, and we punched it up on the, uh, uh, on the video, and there was Keith Jackson busting a 88-yard touchdown run against Nebraska in 1985. <laughs> and we were like – and I was like – I can't remember the last time I saw this, but this might very well have been it because I don't know how much he actually did that in the NFL. But I got a real kick out of it because it was a designed running play and the tight end carries it for 20-plus yards. I just thought to myself, now how much fun would that be if that was Gronk? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and Bill Belichick said, yeah, Josh McDaniels, I think this week we got Gronk in the running game as part of our game plan. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Brandon, similar question to you, right? You're doing the play by play. So you, you, you definitely have to have, you know, all of your bases covered. Sorry to borrow, borrow a metaphor from a different sport. So like what, what, you know, it, it, is there something in particular or there's some, you know, various number of phrases that you're like, really, I, I, I I would never say this in real life, but I, it's a video game. So I guess I got to go with this kind of a situation. Well, that's what's great about Christian and the writer, Ed, and the other people that work on the design is they have given Charles and I kind of free reign to take this into our own voices. So we will look over the scripts, and if there's a word that, ah, I don't know that I would use that, or, ah, that's not a phrase I would say here, I would go lower intensity with this. They've given us the freedom and flexibility to do that. So there really haven't been any moments where I've said something that I was like, no, I wouldn't say that because they, they really encourage us not to do that. They want it to be what we would say in a normal game. But certainly like Charles is describing, there are, we're trying to cover every possible situation. So Charles mentioned what he did last week with that tight end run. Well, another one that I did last week was I was doing field goals to win the game or to lose the game, or to send the game into overtime, and you just you sit and you do go through every possible situation. So we, we are so specific, and we're going to get more specific, but these designers have gotten it so specific that I called a field goal off the right upright in the last seconds of overtime of the Super Bowl to go to a second overtime. Nice. So you think of all those different variables that are in there, and that was just for one field goal miss. Not only did he miss it, it went off the right upright, so we're mm. calling that out specifically. It's in the Super Bowl, and now you're going into a second overtime. Now, look, is, is every line that is like that going to fire perfectly and everyone's going to know that we're talking specific to every single situation? No, certainly there's going to be holes and gaps. But like Christian was saying, long-term, the, the goal is to can you continue to build and improve so that we are coming, covering up as many situations as humanly possible so that the gamer feels like, wow, these guys are actually talking to me in this game, in this situation, is to opposed to just saying, and there's a catch by the tight end, and it's a touchdown for the Patriots, or a nice throw by the quarterback. Well, now we have the ability, because of the accessibility that Christian mentioned, to go through specific player names, to talk to specific contextual situations. Charles has the ability to really teach the user the 101, 201, 301, and 401 levels of football that Christian was talking about. And, and, you know, you mentioned how do you prepare for a game and how is it different to call these games? Well, when you prepare for a game, you read the papers and the articles online and you you look for human interest nuggets. And these guys have also given Charles and I the ability at times to talk about specific players and weave in and out little story nuggets like Vaughn Miller and the fact that he owns a chicken coop back at home. You know, there's a line about that in the game. 
Uh, and so the, again, the accessibility and this vision that these guys at Madden have had and giving Charles and I the free reign to go about this in a number of different ways, hopefully we'll just add layers of depth that the game hasn't had before. And, and, and I, I want to emphasize that that's certainly nothing that, that is because of Charles and I, and it's not anything that Jim and Phil didn't do. It's just that, that accessibility and the obligation, not the obligation, but the, the chance for us to get down there and be in the booth together hours upon hours to really put this together. That's the advantage that we've been given from EA. You know, Christian, one of the, you know, more exciting things about modern video games is the fact that so much of them are tied to being connected to the Internet. You know, and exciting in a lot of ways because it presents you with a lot of opportunities and also challenging because obviously not everyone can be connected to the Internet at all times. But more and more... You know, all of our video game experiences are, if not fully dependent, significantly dependent upon being connected to the Internet. And you mentioned one of the four pillars was the ability to do live updates. So when you accept the fact that, you know, live updates rely upon connect, connection to the Internet, you know, it gives you a, a, another um, – it just gives you a lot more freedom to do certain things. So you mentioned you're doing live updates. You know, you're able to add things in over the course of the year. You know, Madden in and of itself has become much more of a live, you know, online service and a platform, right? I mean, updates are made every week. You know, the ultimate team is constantly getting new stuff. So what um, what does that – there's a lot of opportunities that that presents. How, how – it feels like you guys have completely embraced that now. So what sort of freedoms does that give you, and, and how does that help You know, when, when you know that not everything has to be completely finished for a year when it launches? What sort of, how does that help you plan out what you're doing and, and, and put new things in play, knowing that you need to have a whole lot ready for day one, but you can keep on adding to it moving forward? Hey, Chris, it's tremendously Chris, Christian, Christian yep. before you start, may I just jump in real quick? Yep. Hey, you may, Charles. Uh, this, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I'm still <laughs> trying to get over. I'm still trying to absorb the blow I heard earlier, Rich, that I wasn't you know, the one and only choice after they had told me that. And, you know, I've got a cold compress on my head as we speak. But uh, I apologize. I apologize sincerely. I have to drop off the call. I had promised a, a very good friend that I would read at her grade school class today. Awesome. And it is time for me to go do that. So I'm trying to do my one good deed for the year. <laughs> and I just, to, I, just, I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time with us. I look forward to meeting you in person one of these days. I appreciate it. I am so excited about being a part of this, and I won't belabor the point. I know how fortunate I am. I know how lucky I am. And we know the reception we, you know, may not be you know, absolutely overwhelming in the beginning, but I think Brandon hit it perfectly. We hope to earn their respect over time. You know, We just hope that they give us an opportunity, and we hope that we hit it. And I could not be happier about having the opportunity to be there with Brandon and Christian and the rest of that team. So thanks again for taking the time to do this today. And I'm sorry I have to go early. Oh, no problem. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated and enjoy. Thank you. Great. Take care now. Bye, guys. See you, Charles. See you, Charles. I wonder what book he's reading. <laughs> <laughs> the puppy. Who something, about te- uh, something about Tennessee. Maybe old Smokey. There you, you know, go. Smokey loses his way or something like that. The story of Rocket yes. Top. <laughs> so, Christian, yeah, let's. let's uh, no, you know, to, go, yes, yeah, yes, to, to answer your question, um, it, it's, uh, you know, again, we, we do not lose focus. Our focus from, from day one has been to get as much onto the disc as possible and just to absolutely crush it, right, for the time period that we've had allotted to us. Now, That being said, having the ability to live update is something, as a fan of the series, is so exciting to to me personally. And I think it's very exciting to the team as well, because in the past, when we've shipped the game, we've been stuck with what is on disc. And there have been so many breakout performances. One that I always point to is last year, TJ Yeldon, just due to some accessibility and, and you know, the amount of time we, we didn't record any specific TJ Yeldon lines. So TJ is never spoken about uh, in Madden 16 as TJ Yeldon and, uh, you know, no backstories there. And 
he burst onto the scene last year. You know, took the starting job in Jacksonville and had a, a pretty darn good season. I know Richard, an Alabama guy, so you would have expected that. But yep. a situation like that, we're now able to address. If somebody comes out of the woodwork, or if there's first and foremost, I don't think we've missed any rookie, as Brandon can attest to. We have really uh, quadrupled down on name coverages and and storylines and things of that nature. But if there is someone, if the Kurt Warner story happens where come training camp, somebody that was bagging groceries in a you know, store in Iowa suddenly becomes a starting quarterback of a team, we're going to be able to talk to that. We've got that ability now. And it, it's exciting, right, as a fan, but also as a developer that we can put that content out there. It's also exciting that Brandon and Charles are here and, and ready to, to record on a, you know, almost a weekly basis during the course of the NFL season. So, uh, yeah, Rich, it, it's, it's, I don't want to say a relief because a relief is not the right word. I think that insinuates that we're not doing everything possible to get everything on the disc, but it's, it's a very exciting thing that year one, right. We've got plans to, uh, you know, bring some content into the game post launch, but, I think more so into the future. How else can we harness this to to increase that moving forward? And what other types of stories can we weave in? Can we weave them into different modes? I think that's the most exciting piece is we're in phase one of a, a multi-year journey within the ability to update throughout the year. And uh, now, now we'll see what we can do with it this year and really expand on it in the future. So very exciting opportunity and we're happy to have it. But kudos to our engineering team. They had worked uh, their butts off for a good portion of the year to make sure that that could happen. Just want to give a shout out to uh, Jeff Wesovich and the team there, because uh, without those guys, our abilities there just would not have been able to happen. Yeah. I, I was, you know, I'm a, unlike, I think some, some people, I'm a big fan of, you know, online enabled live service dependent processes, right? Like this is the world that we live in right now. Obviously you don't always have the internet all the time. And some people have a lot more challenges with others, but I was not, um, no, or no, I think you took it that way. I wasn't indicating that you're not trying to get everything ready, but it is, you know, the, oh, the fact know. that yeah. you can update things and can constantly add new content like you're already doing to me opens up great opportunities. You know, Brandon, with that, um, you know, you know now that you are part of, you know, this isn't a one-time thing, right? You're not recording just 60 hours or 100 hours or 500 hours of commentary. This is like a, this is a, <laughs> To be very technical, this is a whole thing that's going to be going on and on and on for a while, um, you know. And as you sort of you know think about what that means now, but also moving forward, you know, this is a pretty amazing opportunity to establish, you know, a a new audience, but also just a a new way of communicating with people about the game of football over the course of, of time, you know, in the most cutting edge new technology way possible it's pretty fascinating and I'm, I'm sure that there's been more than a few eye-opening moments um that you've had already and probably a few more coming down the line just this season alone i would say that every day is an eye-opening moment and every day is a is a new moment for appreciation that i have the chance to do this but yeah i mean and again i'm not going to act like i am 70 I, like i said earlier i'm i'm only 32 but i grew up playing video games just like everybody else like christian did on the phone he's about around my age too when you had two buttons you could go up down left and right and everything that was on the disc or the cartridge back then i guess i should say that was it and you probably back in those days when i used to play you would hear touchdown you would hear interception and that's about all you would hear in the game so to think how far the technology has progressed overall and then specific to the gaming industry, that we have the ability to go down there, like he said, pretty much we're planning on going as many weeks as we can, so pretty much every week of the season, to not only put in new things that we saw on the field. So if Aaron Rodgers throws a, a six-touchdown game, then the next time he jogs onto the field, if you're in the play now portion of the game, you're going to hear us talk about, wow, what a great game, Aaron Rodgers, unbelievable, six touchdown passes. So that's great. But then also that gives us the ability to go back and fill in any holes we missed with a patching. Or if for some reason we find out that, oh, my gosh, we didn't, we didn't record enough lines for somebody or we missed a linebacker or we totally omitted a rookie that's now just blowing up, well, now, all right, great, you're here, let's go. Two hours in the booth, Charles, get in there, Brandon, get in there, and let's record it and almost cover up any, we hope we didn't make many, but any mistakes that we did make or anything that got overlooked, you can cover that up. And so 
that's a, that's a real great thing. That's a thing that I feel fortunate to have, the technology there and the knowledge of those guys that put this game together. Because, again, it, it gives you unlimited accessibility into the future. And not only for year one, but years two, three, four, and however many Charles and I do this, to just keep, like we've said, build and build. You're just add, you can keep everything you've got in there, but you just keep adding and adding and hopefully get enough depth to where when people play the game, they're like, wow, this is, this is neat. This is almost like a real broadcast. So, Christian, uh, to, to close this out, again, this was a, a pretty, I mean, you said it, you, know, you knocked the house down, you started over from scratch. Um, with, what's, your, what's your expectation for the reception from the fans? And, uh, you know, what's your overall plan, uh, you know, moving forward to make sure that you're able to, um, you know, to, to, to get everybody, uh, you know, excited and uh, not just when the game launches, but, you know, to, to keep, you know, to, to keep everybody sort of on the train as, as Madden, you know, rolls through the season. Sure. Um, you know, I know Brandon and Charles have, have brought up numerous times them not being the, the top team, right, or, or knowing that users aren't going to maybe resonate with them immediately just based on their name recognition. And uh, I think they're being way too humble here because the first time that users are going to hear Brandon and Charles in game, I, I really am confident and the whole team is confident that people are going to be blown away uh, just like we were. Uh, they bring just a, a, a knowledge of the game and just a smoothness and just a, a depth uh, across the board that is – amazing and you know i'm sitting here playing the game and we showed some clips to brandon uh of something actually he helped design around some of our special moves and our breakaway logic and, and some of the calls there and just each night I'm, I'm playing the game as it comes together just with a bigger and a bigger smile on my face and i'm the, the toughest critic when it comes to our commentary i'm, I'm very hard on it and the guys will tell you here i, I seem like i'm never happy but it's it's such a rewarding feeling to hear these guys in the game. Uh, the, the team has done such an excellent job and, and we could not have picked better voices to really bring the light, all the cool stuff that the team was able to do this year. So I'm really excited for users to hear Brandon and Charles in game. I'm excited as, as they were mentioning for them to dig into those dark corners and do something that maybe you wouldn't expect to hear commentary for and to hear it. I'm excited for them to hear the Easter eggs and the knowledge of Professor Charles and, and Brandon in there telling the stories like the Vaughn Miller chicken coop stuff. And moving into the future, Rich, as I said, you know, we built we built the house. We, we got the land, we got the foundation down, we got the house, and now it's time to really start putting the nice fixtures in. It's time to get those nice granite countertops. It's time to really put on that nice porch, you know, in the backyard and the patio and, and all, all, you know, the, the swimming pool, things of that nature. That's something that we're so excited uh, for moving forward with Brandon and Charles that this is, as you mentioned, this is an organic living process now. And this is something that we're all in together for, for multiple years here. So this is year one. This is step one, phase one of our house. We're moving forward full steam ahead, you know, really not even rolling off of this product. We're, we're kind of moving full steam ahead uh, in almost a continuous development mindset. And that's what we're all really excited about. I think year one is going to be very special, but we cannot wait to build on this in year two, year three, and beyond. Well, congratulations, gentlemen. Uh, Christian McLeod, uh, Brandon Godden, and, and Charles Davis, congratulations, everybody, on um, you know what is, is definitely something that I know a lot of people are going to be excited about. And something that, as I mentioned at the top, it's sort of a universal experience, even though uh, a lot of us that play Madden sort of go into our own specific directions. Commentary is, is something that we all experience, and it's going to be a very exciting time, and I look forward to, to, to hearing it. I look forward to, uh, look forward to everything that uh, you've got cooking for us overall with Madden NFL 17. So thank you, gentlemen. Congratulations, and good luck with the launch of Madden NFL 17 in August. Thanks a lot, Rich. Thank Appreciate you, Rich. it.